You are now watching a clip from the Inspired by Show. You can watch the full episode on our YouTube channel or listen on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. So make sure to head over there, leave us a five star rating if you enjoyed it, and follow the show. Exactly. Now you mentioned about obviously the changes that you face coming to the UK, moving to the moving to London, then moving to Cambridge. And you mentioned that you went from one of the worst schools in London to then one of the best schools in Cambridge, being the only two black people in the school. Yeah. What was that experience like for you? Um, it's weird, man. It's weird because once again, I've I've never really had this stability thing. You know, so just to give you some context on that, when in Nigeria, I was actually born in a village, right? So I'm from the great empire of Benin, right? In Nigeria. So from Edo State, Benin is the capital of Edo State. So I was born in a village in Isha, Uromi, in Isha, right? And then from there is before I moved to the city. Because, you know, at one point, my mom, who's my auntie, she comes to the village and she saw the way I was living. And she, you know, she tells me the story where she just started crying, right? And then she called my mom, like, please, let me take, let me take him, right? Let me take him. So again, I've moved from there, you know, into the city and stuff like that. So moving from London into Cambridge wasn't really that strange. Also, my stepdad was white. Right. So going to like an all white school again didn't really seem that strange because, you know, we've been going to church right in London. We we're going to church. So there was black people in church. There was white people. Our pastors were white. You know, so there wasn't like this. Oh, my God, there's just white people all over the place. So it wasn't really bad. And I'm a people person. Right? I've always been a people person. You know, I like to interact with people, all that sort of stuff. So it wasn't really that bad. And, you know, I'm also capable of looking after myself. So listen, it's cool anyway. Like, people are going to talk, people are going to get slapped, things are going to happen, and we'll move on. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So those typical things that you'd expect did happen. I wouldn't say, you know, that there was that much racial things from the students, if I'm completely honest. The racial things actually came from the teachers. Wow. Yeah, which, which is really, really weird. Um, that, that really came from the teachers because there's just a way. Because they haven't... When I think about Cambridge back then, I'll be walking in the streets and, you know, you get like an old guy. I'm, I'm a young guy, right? You get an old guy walk past the street and spit on the floor, right? That was Cambridge back then because there's not this... There's not... And I think it comes down to having an interpersonal relationship with people of different colours. And if you haven't got that, it's really difficult for you to understand that they're just human, just like you. Not that it's really difficult. It depends if you're open-minded. If you're not as open-minded, then it might be a bit more difficult. But nonetheless, I, I understand that nuance, right? And I said... Because for me, I'll, I'll use this example on another podcast I was on a couple of weeks ago to say the propaganda about race is so much in the West that even me as a black man who is, you know, I like to say I'm, I'm Pan-African in my views. If I'm going walking somewhere at night, not now, I try to, you know, I try to consciously, you know, be aware of my thought process. But if I'm walking down the street at night in London and I see a black man, I've got like a bit of a, of a, you know, let me just be on alert, right? Mm -hmm. And if I see a white man, I don't have the same feeling. Why is that? And that's me as a black man that I've got experiences of a black man and experiences of white people. Why do I feel that way, right? Mm -hmm. It's again because of the propaganda. So imagine a white person who's never had an experience of any black people and all they get is the information in the press. Mm -hmm. Then obviously there's going to be, you know, a certain connotation. So whenever there'll be confrontations in school, I'll always be the one in the wrong. Right. Whenever any situation happened, it's always me getting punished for it. So there was all little things like that. Um, but aside from that, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I enjoyed school. I'm grateful for you saying that, though, because even from someone in your situation, you've had that experience because of the propaganda. And I'm a massive believer that it's all about the environment that you're in. I'm very fortunate. My mum, when she was 18, was hanging around with a lot of black people in, her, in Liverpool, where she's from. And she was the only white person hanging out with them. And so my granddad actually said, you either stop hanging out with those people, those people, or I'll throw you on the street. And she said, I'll pack my bags. Wow. And she left. So my whole family, my whole life, I've never, ever noticed a difference. This is honest to the truth. And when we started Queens in Business, which is obviously a business that you've been familiar with for a while, when we actually merged as co-founder group, it was only until about three months into us promoting it that everyone said to me, Chloe, do you know you're the only white co-founder? <laughs> and I and you started like, it. And I was the one that started it. <laughs> I picked the people. And it's because I picked them based on their experience and yes. their expertise rather than their skin color. Now, we actually attract more completely different multicultural, more different religions, different backgrounds, different wealth, e e everything because of our variety. Mm. So I guess my question for you, Ibrahim, is from your experience, obviously, I was going to ask you, has things changed? So I'd love to know that. But also, what do you think we need to do 
whether that's as a community, as a nation, as a, as a planet, to actually make shifts in that so that we can stop people of all backgrounds feeling uncomfortable with just differences? Listen, I, I don't have the answer. No, that's the truth. What can we do? I think just listen, because it's weird. It's, 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 it's very, very weird to me. But the one good thing is I would say, you know, there's, there's a lot of bad sides to social media, but there's a lot of good sides to social media as well. Mm. And with social media, we can now start to see that maybe, I mean, some of us have already known this for a while, but maybe what we hear on the press in newspapers, maybe <laughs> might not just be true. Just maybe, right? I think we're all starting to agree with that now. So I think people, there's a little bit more critical thinking because people, well, actually, this is my belief. And last time I heard them saying this on the news and I know they were incorrect. So maybe they're also incorrect about other things as well and the way that they portray those messages. So I think that's a good thing. It's allowing people to at least question what they have first, because if you question something, it's a good thing. Like Tony Robbins says, I keep talking about a lot about Tony Robbins, right? He's my guy. But if you ask the right questions, then it leads you to the right path to get the answers. Mm -hmm. So if you said, is this true? If you care enough about that question, then you're going to try and find out the information. And the truth is, when you look into the information, you find out that actually we're not any different. Mm -hmm. So that's going to give you the answer that you're looking for. So it's just about, you know, people are more inquisitive these days. And I think, you know, with that, we're going to get to a better place. Mm.